Welcome to another edition of the Hoop Scoop. I'm Jerry Johnson, and boy, do we have ourselves a game in Lubbock on Wednesday night as Texas Tech came roaring back from a seven point halftime deficit to defeat number seven Baylor. 83 to 73. And it was a really impressive performance on a number of levels. Uh, of course, just overcoming Kevin McCuller, uh not playing one of their best players. Um, the halftime deficit, just playing a quality opponent in Baylor, who obviously was you know, ready and assuming they were going to win that game. After dropping that one in Waco to Texas Tech, they were hungry for this win. They were trying to stay up with Kansas as much as they could in the Big 12 race. And, uh, and then just the whole in-state rivalry thing. And but Texas Tech was not to be denied. Um, again, they showed a penchant for coming back in the second half, turning up things defensively, which they did on Baylor. They uh, really really did a great job of stopping the skip pass, which so many teams have started doing against Texas Tech to combat this no-middle donut defense, whatever you want to call it. Um, they were ready for that skip pass. Uh, early in the game, they got their hands on a couple and looked like they were going to get steals, but just glanced out of bounds. As the game went on, they started getting those those steals, like Mighty Joe said, in his uh, Jaeger shots, and uh, started turning them into transition points. And not only that, but it deterred Baylor from making that skip pass. Like, you know, it, they weren't as crisp offensively. They still got some open shots, but not as many as they would have liked, not as many as they're used to getting. And uh, I think that was a big part of, of, of the game, that – that adjustment and Tech's been toying with them and doing that here leading up to this because teams are you know we're starting to, to do that just to swing the ball skip skip a guy throw it uh, across the court either free throw line extended for a three or in the corner and they've been getting open shots but uh, the backside defensive guy is playing that passing lane looking for it and uh, so that's an adjustment we'll see what another adjustment is from that from from coaches but uh, that was a really key one and. Uh, I think that was a big part of Tech's comeback in the in the second half. Another major part of the comeback was Kevin O'Banner losing his mind. He went crazy. It was so much fun to watch. Uh, he had two points at halftime, but he, he finished with 23 points and 13 rebounds. Went crazy from deep. Uh, even uh, the great Patrick Mahomes, who was in attendance with that raucous crowd at the United Supermarkets Arena, he was courtside with his fiance, and uh, he was going crazy as, as O'Banner was going crazy, making all these threes. And uh, not just that, but he did a good job of getting some offensive rebounds, which he's very good at, and uh, putbacks and uh, just working inside as well. So it was a complete game from Kevin O'Banner. And when he is on, when he's hitting from deep, producing offensively, Texas Tech becomes very, very difficult to beat for anybody anywhere. Bryson Williams did his thing on the block, knocked down one of those uh, threes from the top of the key, which he's so good at in the pop, uh, the, the pick and pop game. And then uh, Adonis Arms, who was uh, really good in the the victory over Baylor and Waco, had another good game. He had, I think he had five assists actually. Or Shannon had who had another good game. Terrence had uh, had five assists and. Uh, Arms had seven rebounds to go with the double-digit offensive game, too. And, uh, he was good. He was aggressive in getting to the basket. He didn't settle for a lot of outside shots. Shannon's overall floor game, uh, Terry Shannon, was excellent. He had another tomahawk jam that brought the house down. And uh, a couple and ones there. And, uh, man, just a really nice hustle play on defense to get back and get a block. So while he took a couple of shots that I thought were ill-advised, you got to live with it. He's uh, he'll, he'll make some of those. He's a very good player and had a very good game. It was a big part of, of the win. But, uh, you know, Texas Tech just overcoming this adversity and making those adjustments um, that, you know, Mark Adams and the staff have made. I mean, it's become a uh, – you know, a habit. I mean, Texas Tech gets down at the half and comes back and, and, and wins these big games. And you just got to tip the cap to the staff and their adjustments because if they were losing these games after after winning at the half, uh, we sure would be criticizing them, of course. But uh, no, it's, um, Mark Adams has done an amazing job. He's got to be in the lead for Big 12 Coach of the Year and National Coach of the Year. He's got to be up there. Uh, and for good reason, the Red Raiders right now are toying with the two seed. Um, I think right now they're strongly they're they're basically on the three line. I think they could, you know, if the tournament started after this week, they would probably be a three seed. Um, they have some work to do to become a two seed, but it's possible, especially if they win Saturday in Austin against Texas, number twenty Texas. But right now, Texas Tech's ranked they were ranked eleventh before that big big win over number seven Baylor. So if you Sweet Baylor, sweet Texas, 
complete those sweeps in consecutive games, I think I think that would be six wins out of seven. Um, you got to start looking at Texas Tech as uh, being like around seventh, you know, and uh, on that that three line for a three seed, which would be terrific. Uh, so big game coming up in Austin, 11:30 a.m. Saturday. I think the game's going to be televised on ABC. Of course, Tech won that first epic game here in Lubbock. Uh, earlier this month, but uh, you know, if you could sweep Texas and Chris Beard, it'd just be a feather in the cap. But it'd also be big for the resume too. You know, I know there's going to be a lot of Red Raider fans there in attendance in Austin, like there always is, but but more so than usual due to the circumstances. And uh, you know, Texas uh, is coming off an overtime, hard-fought overtime victory at Oklahoma. Uh, they're going to be ready. I expect Chris Beard to pull out all the stops. But uh, you know, if you could slow down Marcus Carr. And, uh, you know, have uh, whether it be Kevin O'Banner or Davion Warren or Adonis Arms, somebody go off. Um, whether Kevin McCuller is ready to play or not, then uh, I think Texas Tech has a good chance because of that defense. The defense is spectacular. This team is resilient. And, uh, man, if you could sweep Baylor and Texas in back-to-back -back games, that would just be uh, amazing, especially considering the rest of the schedule. Don't get me wrong. You have Kansas State and Oklahoma on it, two teams that beat you earlier this year, but it's – the bot it's the bottom third, bottom half or bottom third of the Big 12 is what's left on your schedule. You've already played two against Kansas, split with them. Two against Iowa State, split with them. Swept Baylor. Um, so if you could sweep Texas and sweep TCU, sweep the state of Texas, that would just be amazing. Uh, what a year it's been. Uh, what a great season for Mark Adams and, and his team. And uh, so you know, uh, no rest for the weary. Got got the Longhorns in Austin on Saturday, 11:30 a.m. So with that, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.